Hi everyone, it's Sally Esselin again from Magic Mike Moments and today I'm very excited because I'm talking to someone all the way over in California. It's Dr. Christiana um, Schroeter from Hello Happy Nest. So welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on Magic Mike Moments and I'm super thrilled to share my story with you. Yes, well, before we get into your story, why don't I introduce you to our viewers? Christiana Schroeter started her business as a health and fitness coach in 2013. She has degrees in food and nutrition and a PhD in health economics and 20 plus years of experience helping clients transform their daily wellness routines. Christiana has worked as a professor for 15 plus years and earned multiple national and international teaching and publication awards. Most of her clients find Christiana through her Happy Health Hustle podcast, which is ranked among the top 1.5% globally. Wow, awesome, well done. So Christiana creates a community on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube where she shares how to nurture your wealth without the overwhelm. So welcome. I um, just can't wait to get down and dirty with you and discuss all of this. <laughs> so Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So do you want to... Uh, start with a little story about how you got into this journey and you've been doing it for quite a while now so everybody loves a story so how did you end up doing what you're doing now well I think uh, whenever you get into a certain field there is usually like a personal motivation there yeah. and for me it was really that I struggled with per personal health issues mm -hmm. and that I figured out how to overcome them and I am really deep down I'm a student but I'm also a teacher so when I figure things out, I'm the student. And then when I overcome it, I become the teacher because I'm like, oh my gosh, that like, totally helped me. I should share that with others. And so if when other people told me, oh, I struggle with digestive issues. I'm always tired. I don't have any energy. I always feel bloated and this lack of motivation to do anything. I was like, wow, I had the same things. And this is what helped me. And so I started sharing what helped me with others. And before you know it, you know, I really felt, um, I guess I have deep down this passion of education. Mm -hmm. I felt like I should reach a broader audience. So I started recording lessons. I started sharing those videos. And then I thought, well, maybe even more, I should talk on social media about it. And I created a social media account. And then one thing led to the next thing and, People started missing it and they said, oh, can we just watch those videos again? Can you make it into a course, like organize them in a sequential order? And then my course was Born Journey to Wellness. And now my happy, healthy hustle really is that intersection of the health, the happiness and the productivity, because deep down, we're always hustling for something, but we're all striving to be healthy and happy. I love it because I, I was only just on a, a podcast just before this, and we were talking about our greatest strength is helping people with what we've actually gone down the path ourselves and the 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 journey of healing the journey of personal development and as you said it's usually some um usually a medical illness or something that pops up in our life that uh, brings us to this crossroads of we have to bring some change in and I, I really love that. We're eternal learners, aren't we? We're like sponges learning and growing, but also being masters as well. So it, I love that teacher-student um, analogy for sure. Um, so, wow, a PhD in health economics. Now, talk to me about that. Yeah, so in, in Germany, I studied on food and nutrition path. Mm -hmm. And this is actually another little think in my in my personal journey or transformation mm -hmm. I actually always thought oh I'm going to do something with cooking I'm going to do something with nutrition counseling to where people come in and I help them to find healthy recipes to really transform their lives so I worked in a clinic for a little while and it mm -hmm. I did just that patients came in I helped them put together nutrition plans we looked at their diary in terms of what they ate but now here is really where the crossroads happen. When those people were then sent home and they didn't have the psychologist, the medical staff, the exercise physiologist, the nutritionist, and the cook, yep. all of a sudden, without that support system, the little world went right back to where it was. I would say 99% of the time, there's always the one where the life just changed. 
But yeah. for the remainder of them, it's pretty much like New Year's resolutions where there is a really big motivation. And at the end of January, maybe that motivation kind of fizzles away, which doesn't mean that New Year's resolutions are pointless, but frequently they're just set up in unrealistic terms, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, mm, I don't know, I really want to do quite like that. I think I want to more help people at home. And when I started looking, how can you eat healthy at home? I realized that healthy food is expensive. Mm. So I thought it's about the economics. You need to work out at home. You need to eat healthy at home. But working out at home and eating healthy at home isn't quite as easy as we all wish because mm. nobody has a home gym. It's expensive and nobody can just load up on healthy fruits and vegetables. And if they do, how do we even prepare that? So that's where I saw my personal niche. And I started looking more into making your home your nest that would be happy and healthy and where I could help you find a personal comfort level of creating something that is you because we all have things that resonate with us. And so I'm basically coaching clients to find the best wellness, the best accountability, and of course, the best productivity when you're working from home. Yeah, I love it, particularly post-COVID, right? Like I'm I'm in Melbourne. We were the most locked down city in the world and uh, home became our haven and so many people now are working from home because of that um, and having all, working through all those different areas within your home because I get it. I mean, I'm I'm lucky because I'm a personal trainer, so I've, I have my own gym at home and had during COVID, but, you know, um, covering that exercise element, you know, that was really tricky for so many people. And then the diet thing too, and, you know, working with your mental health through that sort of thing. I absolutely love it. So over your journey, um, talk to us about how you've overcome some of the challenges that you will face because mm -hmm. nothing is smooth sailing, right? We always have these hiccups, obstacles. And uh, do you want to share some of them and how you overcame them? Yeah, of course. And I also want to um, kind of like come back to this, um, working from home and you're wondering yep. what is she doing with her PhD intersection and I mentioned earlier the health the happiness and the productivity yep. I am actually a full-time professor at the university and I teach innovation entrepreneurship I teach food marketing so I do see that generation of mm, 18 19 all the way until 20 year olds coming in and I see the changes because uh, frequently those students then later on become my clients, yeah. <laughs> which typically tend to be like in their 30s and 40s. And so I know what's going to come, so to speak, because I see it in my students. So one of the challenges um, mm. that happened, and it happened, actually happened twice in my career so far, yeah. is that there is a close-knit um system of students right my students get to know each other really well in the classroom and they work on group projects they know each other's names they know a little bit of their backgrounds that one of those students passes away right and it could be um of course that there are illness anything like that but while I have been working here actually there were twice student death and they were both I would say self-caused, right? Let's use that word. So it was like drinking too much alcohol and the second time around it was um, drug related. Yeah. So in that case, a professor becomes a completely different role model because all of a sudden this health and wellness piece yep. turns it to a little bit of more like a coaching and counseling piece. And I realized yep. as a professor, I have a completely different platform. So challenges in my life frequently have been that people think, oh, like she's this healthy and bubbly individual and it all comes easy to her. And I I work really hard in, in keeping up my health and wellness. But at the same time, I also want to emphasize that you, no matter where you are in your life, whether you are in high school or at the university or, you know, you are retired, it's never too late to start your journey to wellness because you just don't need to look very far to get motivation. So when I had student grief in my classrooms, I basically said, look, this is a really challenging time right now. So you need to reach out to each other, but you also need to reach out to yourself and you need to think, all right, self-care is never selfless. I need to take care of myself and I need to nurture right now what I'm struggling with. So think about your own life and challenges that you've had, and you really need to look at them as you can't change them. You can go back, but you have to look at them as like 
we all are there for each other. We need to form a community. We need to collaborate with each other and helping each other through hard times. And of course, we also need to look at this as something who could be an accountability partner, a mentor, or a support system for me. So as um, a professor, now what I do is I much more emphasize in my classrooms the sense of community, mm. the sense of um, we need to build friendships in the classroom. We are not just there to earn a certain grade. We are also earning colleagues, networks. And of course, we're earning you know, just to being good humans. <laughs> there is no class like that. But there is a very famous class at Harvard University that's called How to Be Happy. Yeah. And while I don't teach a class like that, I wish I would. That's basically <laughs> what we all need to learn. How can we be happy? All right. I totally, absolutely align with all of that because at the end of the day, we all want to be happy, healthy and wealthy. It's just like, you know, basic stuff. And that's not just wealthy about money. It's wealthy on the inside as well. It's abundance in all aspects of your life. And I really loved how you were talking about um, out of every experience, there's a silver lining. There's learnings to be to, to be had and everything is perception. We can perceive things to be in a negative or a positive and I love how you had to morph, you know, with the situations that came across you because at the end of the day, particularly as the the planet is going through this massive shift, it's it's all focusing on connections, it's focusing on collaborations, it's focusing on community, and people love accountability and support. So being amongst groups of like-minded people, collaborating with with people who can support you as well and who, who can assist you on your journey of healing or your journey into wellness because, once again, it's a choice. And we can think ourselves into illness or we can think ourselves into wellness. And I love how you just do a whole 360 on all aspects of the well-being. So it, it, diet and exercise is important, but then that mental health aspect as well and, and tying it all together, that's awesome. So with the people that you work with, what do you mm-hmm. think is the biggest issue facing facing these people? I think the biggest challenge is always the distance between your ears. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> that if there is one measure that's the most important one, it's not body weight, it's not, you know, how old you are or anything like that. It's this <laughs> this <laughs> right here. That's the biggest struggle, the area between your ears. Look, getting your mindset in. Uh, sometimes I have people and they are like, oh, yeah, I want to I want to be healthy and I'm, I want to be like losing a certain amount of pounds. And I call that, you know, a result goal. Mm. I want to lose X, Y, Z pounds. Yeah. And for me, you know, I hear it a lot. And of course, social media doesn't really help with that. Yeah. Um, that's not the coach I am. I'm sure there's people out there that post before after pictures, side profiles, bikini pictures. And why are those people always wearing the same bikini? Did they buy them in two different sizes? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so that's not me, right? So then I am more of a coach. I say, oh, right, that, that's amazing, you know, so um, great. Let's maybe be instead of result goal oriented we're going to be action goal oriented okay so we we like using numbers i'm totally with you i'm an economist but how about we say instead of saying i want to lose 10 pounds we say i want to walk every day for 10 minutes okay Mm -hmm. and that's there is a number and that goal might actually lead ultimately to what you are planning on doing which is losing the weight but it's not a struggle Because we know how to walk, right? And even Mm. if you say, oh, like, whatever, I want to do 10 minutes of stretching per day or 10 minutes of swimming. I mean, whatever it is, moving or 10 Mm. different fruits and vegetables I want to try by the end of the month. So figure out something that is um, a wellness area, but set an action into it because that action ultimately lead to what you want. And the good thing is that it already gives you a plan. A result goal really doesn't give you a plan. Losing 10 pounds is like, well, so what am I going to do? Yeah. So that's difficult. Mm. And in general, of course, action goals are also something that you can start small and then you can build big. So 10 minutes walking, for instance, yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of time. But you can even, you know, start building that to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, et cetera. 
I absolutely love that. I used to run goal setting classes and it's words are empty unless you're actioning your thoughts, right? So actually getting it into motion, your energy into motion out of like you've got it up and out, written down your goals, but then making it into something that you can actually do. And I love how you keep it simple, chunking it down into very small, measurable, achievable uh, little tasks. And then it just grows from that. It's the snowball effect, right? It's just, just you talking my language about applying, you know, and doing, it's about the doing, not just the saying, because, you know, what you think in your head, that's really easy to put down. Yeah, I, I'm choosing to do this. I'm choosing to that, but actually applying it and putting it into action. It's goal because that's when you're going to achieve success and results for sure. Love it, love it, love it. So in line with that, Top three tips to help people along that line. So you said like setting actionable goals, keeping them small and simple. Um, mm -hmm. And anything else we can add to that? I like to keep goals in a visual field. Okay, right? great. Yeah. So goals that are small could be added to, and let me actually <laughs> add a little um, visual thing to the right now that you see what I'm actually meaning, Okay. So I have like these little things that we all are familiar with. Oh, yeah, sticky notes. Yep, yep. So sticky notes. Um, and you could, um, you know, whatever, your movement goals, blue sticky notes. On here. <laughs> goals. Yeah, I know, sticky yeah. notes. <laughs> and I even have some that are aligned by all means, right? You right. can make sure you list of fruits and vegetables. Yeah. So then your sticky notes will go into various places in your house. Yeah. Mm. So, for instance, next to your mirror, right? Be, because we all tend to look in the mirror. Comes like a little positive message. You can do it. Yeah. Um, you look gorgeous today. Oh, um, you know, um, most amazing outfit ever. Or you got this. Like little things like that, you know. Like it, it will fit, trust me. And it's just something you will see that brings a smile to your face. The next to my mirror, I have a little sticky note. And it says... Um, failures are your unique way of getting to where you need to be. Because sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, crap. And then I'm like, well, actually not. You know what? I mean, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Keep going. You know? So I put that right there. Right there. I and love then, it. I love it. I've got, got mine all around me. I can see it now. Oh, Show me, Sally. This too <laughs> shall pass. I serve. I deserve. Everything is always working out for me. You can create more wealth. I have them plastered all over me. And then I have my powerful affirmation. Um, it's Louise yes. Hay one every day. Today is I believe in myself knowing that the entire universe is always backing me. You know. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. I know. It's like so I have and I've in, in, um, created this clothing line with powerful affirmations on it. It's called Empowered Clothing. You dress with intent. I oh, love it. Just but it's in line with where your attention goes, your energy flows. So when you're putting these sticky notes there, you're drawing that energy in because you, you especially if you say it out loud, you say it out yeah. loud, it's amplifying that energy that's going out to the universe. And the universe is saying, hey, everything is working out for me. Okay, let's make things work out for you on a bigger volume. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've got this or you can do it. Well, then that's just amplifying the energy behind, yeah, I can actually do it. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. so powerful. You know, uh, we're so on the same page because words are cheap if we're not doing something about it. So you're saying put things into action, keep it small, measurable, achievable, and then amplify it with these sticky notes all around the place because it's just amplifying your intentions. They're powerful affirmations. When even though they're simple words, when you just keep amplifying that energy behind it with that intention, because intention is everything, well, then you achieve success so much quicker. You're visualizing, you're feeling into it. It's It takes you to, it's amazing, isn't it? The magic that happens just by little, small, little tips that you can um, do yourself, just simple things back of the toilet door as you said on the mirror you know on the fridge you know you know you are beautiful you are skinny you are wonderful whatever it is that you're choosing what I mean I don't like the word skinny but uh you know you are beautiful right you're beautiful inside, inside and, out. and out yeah yeah mm -hmm. sure, for sure. The, the the reason why I mentioned the mirror of course is oh. because we tend to look in the mirror and we tend to search for these imperfections correct yeah and I always say I am imperfectly perfect right oh. so you got that too yeah 
Oh, my oh, sister's from a different mister. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> High five to us. <laughs> so I, I always think the mirror is, you know, such an, an a crucial part of your day yeah. because you usually don't look in it like, oh, my gosh, you know, good day. You're more like, what's happening there on my face? <laughs> yeah, and so when you see the sticky note, you all of a sudden it changes the flow of your thoughts, right? It, it makes them a little bit in, a, you know, puts a little bit of a pink filter on it. And that is what we need in our life. We sometimes just need it. It's nearly like when you edit a picture, you sometimes need to edit your thoughts. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You become your inner coach, right? Because you're shifting and lifting your energy. So something mm -hmm. that's perceived negative, you're shifting it across the line to be positive, right? And mm -hmm. so you know, I love you and all that sort of stuff. And you're not looking at the imperfections. You're looking at the the positive features. Um, I interviewed a lady last week who does face reading. And, you know, we were talking about people who do Botox and losing all their charm lines because it's your wisdom is caught in the mm -hmm. creases in your face. And when you're freezing it, you're freezing your wisdom, right? <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, it's, it's just interesting. We can shift our perception around what is perceived negative into a positive when we stop and, and just really take that time to pause because mirror work is so powerful when you go past the superficial layer and start to dig deeper and deeper underneath mm -hmm. the layers hey mm, love it <laughs> all righty so what is the thing that gets you out of bed what are you most passionate about what drives mm. you what gives you ignites that light inside of you Actually, I just talked about that with my uh, children the other day. And um, for me, you know, the main thing is really health and wellness. And it, mm. it's little things. It's like little quirky things that get me really excited. Um, so, for instance, I might buy myself um, like a, a really great face wash or anything. And so then in the morning when I get up, I think about, oh, I'm going to use this amazing face wash. Or I might buy myself this amazing herbal tea. And then when I'm waking up, I'm thinking, oh, today's the day and I'm going to try the herbal tea. So now you see, like, these are all like little things. Yeah. But yeah. in the grand scheme, they are what brings me joy. So it's not like, um, you know, I'm going to change the world. I never think like that. I always think I'm going to change my corner of the world. Yep. By using maybe this, um, I use clean beauty, right? By using this clean beauty face wash or yep. by using this um, beautiful tea that I bought um, that is organic and fair trade, I can change what I put in my body. And because my children and my family sees it, I tell my students about it too, or the people in my fitness classes, I can change my experiences and I share those experiences through social media, through my podcast and through my YouTube channel with others. So I, in a certain way, change my little corner of the world. And that's what gets me out of bed, that I'm experiencing things. And, you know, when when I'm feeling it works well for me that I'm sharing it. I love that. Do you want to share a little bit more about your podcasts and shows? What, what do you actually sure. have going on so we can share with our viewers? Yeah, so I, I am a firm believer in storytelling and I'm a firm believer that everybody has a story to share. Mm -hmm. Most um, of the time we are thinking, well, nobody really cares. And then it's like, why am I even bothering? Well, first of all, um, we all care um, because it could be that there are like certain elements in your story that resonate with others. So think about a story as like, um, you're in a store and it's full of these colorful beads and you're just picking out random colors and you're making a little bead necklace. And the way that you co coordinate these colors and these shapes and these sizes is completely uniquely up to you. That's your story. Yeah. But maybe you picked out some reds and other people are like, oh, oh, I like red too. And when you tell them the story, they look at this necklace and they're like, oh, that resonates with me too. And so when you share your story, it's just like that, that people hear something. And when they hear how you overcame your struggles, mm -hmm. that will give them motivation to overcome their own struggles too. So we really look at people that discovered their superpower by going through a very messy and challenging time in their life. Mm -hmm. How did they come out on the other side and what really helped them? So what influence helped them? It could be a person, it could be a book. It could be that all of a sudden 
they went somewhere it could be a place right and they are sharing that on my podcast and it's quite empowering and at the same time of course it is also really eye-opening because we only see these individuals as these superstars what they are right now but frequently we don't realize that they also have this past that they carry with them and they open their suitcase and they're basically taking out the elements in the suitcase and sharing it with us on my podcast yeah that's great and um what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so what do you think is your actual superpower? You know, what is mm. your essence? Why are people drawn to you in particular? I mean, I'm already getting an idea, but I'd love to hear what you think it is. Oh, I would love to hear it later on too. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, um, because I've worked with clients and I work with students and I also have the reviews on my podcast um, what I really hear how I help people is I, I am just this bubbly ball of energy. Yeah. So I really can lift people up. Uh, they can walk into my seven o'clock Pilates class and they might be feeling the first thing that they need is a cup of coffee. But when they walk out, they actually feel like I can do this. So I have a superpower of uplifting you, of providing energy, but also igniting you and making you feel good about yourself. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, really struggle with because we all tend to be our own worst enemies and our own worst critiques. And I help people make feel good about themselves. I, that's exactly how I would have summed it up too. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, I don't know how you have time to fit everything else in, like, you know, doing your podcasts and doing your Pilates and doing your professor work and your lecturing and everything you're a very busy lady but you know everything mm. comes down to your mindset doesn't it you know it's it does do you want to talk a bit it about does. and in a certain way it also comes down to something that's super important in our life and that's why I like the format of my podcast Um, you just need to be authentic <gasps> right um you can never really think uh, or, I mean I have to tell you my podcast is only six months old right yeah um when I started it I actually really didn't know what the heck I was doing, right? Yeah. Like I got a phone out and I thought, I think there's a record button on here. <laughs> <laughs> and I just recorded it. And so the other day I was searching for these files and I was like, what the heck did I do back then? Oh, that's true. I just recorded um, an audio file on my phone. And, and that's sometimes what you just have to do because think about it this way. If you always question everything that you're doing, if you always think, well, 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 you need to play a certain role, it needs to be perfect, it needs to be this, it needs to be that, you're never really sharing the amazing you in being that you are. And I mean, it's rather good to take a first very messy step than not taking that first step at all. Um, because I'm sure, you know, we we always like thinking, well, it it. I could have probably waited longer. I could have bought equipment. I could have had a professional editor in my podcast. I'm still editing everything myself. And that's just something I like doing it. But at the same time, it's also something that works for me right now. Oh. And it, it's something that I'm I'm authentic about. It's basically, you know, I look back and I see progress and how I'm learning. And that's a great thing too. So I'm transforming my knowledge and I'm also sharing it openly that yeah look back on like podcast episode <laughs> one when my husband was there yeah. and I was like what the hell are we actually doing right <laughs> I love it you know publish not perfect right just get it out there and mm -hmm. people love real authentic people and I'm very particular about who I choose to speak with because I only I'm authentic and genuine myself and you know, people can smell out fakeness in a second and you only have to look at social media and all these people pretending they've got these perfect lives. No one has a perfect life. You know, we're all perfectly imperfect, like we said before, warts and all, you know, and just there's nothing more than, there's nothing more attractive than a confident person. And that's someone who is just comfortable in their own skin, being themselves, just saying to the world, this is me. I'm perfectly imperfect, warts and all. But you know what? I own my stuff, you know. And <laughs> we stumble, we get up, we dust ourselves off and we keep going. And I, I, I'm exactly the same with the podcast thing, you know. You just get it out there because people love listening to stories and journeys and every, and it also helps us 
feel that we're not alone that oh my gosh I feel like that or you resonate with what people say and it's so empowering because I think we're both about empowering people and inspiring people and uplifting people with that I can feel with similar energies babe (laughs) for sure just on 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 the other sides of the world and 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 also think about um this what we just talked about so if you have a story to share um we mentioned the podcast you mentioned the youtube we mentioned the social media and of course what we haven't mentioned at all is you can totally interact with um people locally right so you could even like start reaching out to your neighbors or start a book club or anything like that it's really just about not feeling you are in a vacuum because if there is like you know i researched obesity and i could tell you people need to do this need to do that need to do that i think the number one pandemic is really that people are lonely Lonely. and they absolutely yeah so don't be lonely (laughs) right that was a connection (laughs) absolutely and that's what i said before this you know particularly now it's about community hanging out with like-minded people collaborating connection but having that accountability because it it helps support you so when you've got these goals these action things you know join get some friends together and go on walking groups together or you know i work out with my girlfriends and we workshop life so you know the power of conversation and bringing things up but it's we're social beings, so we need to be amongst people. And loneliness was one of the biggest, uh, I don't you know, one of the more negative things about COVID was the loneliness and the bubbles. And I don't know if you guys had the bubbles, but we had these compassionate bubbles that if you had a partner and they were out of the 5K zone, you could catch up and whatever because loneliness was, oh, the flow-on effect has been, you know, heartbreaking really, just awful. But yeah, you know, no. sorry, go on. Oh, I, I I want to say also, you know, you talked earlier about the challenges. I sometimes have students that come to my office hours and I think they have a, a question with regard to the material, <laughs> but then they just ask me questions about my family and speaking authentic, you know, I show them pictures of my family. I tell them what movie I watched on the weekend. I tell them like different recipes we tried and different things like that, because I'm not just like this two dimensional individual that walks into the classroom. I also want to make them feel like, hey, I have a life. And so sometimes I have students that come to office hours just to talk, you know, they're like, oh, well, cool. So this and that. And then I wonder, it's like, is there a question? No, there's no question. It's basically just connecting. Great. I love it. And I'm still friends with students that came to my class. I'm hoping for the student that one day will name their firstborn child after me. (laughs) It's going to happen. I love that. I get it. Yeah, 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 because you're just real. So I have this mantra, which is let go, step up and be more. And it's about let go of judgment on yourself from other people. Let go of limiting beliefs. Let go of drama. Oh, my God, walk away from that. Step up Mm -hmm. and just be more of you. Be more of your authentic self. Because when you are just comfortable in your own skin, just being you, not doing more, just being more of you, the authentic you, that resonates out and it's like moths to a flame. People are drawn to that. Because you're just resonating out this beacon of love and light and people are just drawn into that. So I'm not surprised at all that people come knocking on your door and just want to have a good old chin wag, have a bit of a chat and just shoot the breeze and just say, hey, how's it going? Because they're aligning with you. And as I said earlier, it's like you have your own personal radio station and you're just plugging that out up and um, turning it up sorry and people are just coming to the room going what's that music playing I'm loving that I want more I know <laughs> I know and and um you know at, at the end of the day it's also you know something to where you feel um, some days you know you you share about this some days you share about that um you never really want to feel you don't let people know how things are going. So I never really pretend with my students that every day I have is amazing and great because I also want to tell them, oh, look, like today we struggled with this and today was that. And I think that's also important on social media. Like today, for instance, my Instagram post was three things that I did wrong when I started my business and I really just openly shared it. Yep. And I think that's 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 just as important as like, yay, I did this and yay, I did that. So I don't share like, oh, my my dog is an, an honor student or something like that. <laughs> I rather want to share the failure because really? I think that's really where the power 
of authenticity comes in that you look at this and you're like something, oh, cool. I figured that that really didn't work. Pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love it because people just love real because it just shows that we are humans, right? We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we may well be on this spiritual path of awakening, but we're still human beings on this earthly planet and we cock up all the time. That's just this right. life. That's the beauty. It helps people realize that they're just human too, and it's just it's just normal. So along the lines of my la- mantra of let go, step up, and be more. What have you, where in your life have you let go, stepped up, and be more? If you you kind of touched on the authentic part. Hmm. Well, I think um, yeah, every year when I look back, I had like a certain theme to a year, right? Yeah. Maybe. So. Um, to where I was like, okay, this is the year when I'm going to try to drink celery juice every every morning or something like that. <laughs> Does that sound familiar, Sally? <laughs> and this is the year when I'm going to try and maybe, um, you know, um, have a green smoothie in the morning. Or this is the year when I'm going to try and eat um, tropical fruits or different things. And this was all nutrition related, but I'm just like doing something like that. Um, I think there are so many things that I let go, like, for instance, this constant questioning, how is this good for me? Is this not good for me? Um, My mantra is now really, um, just go for it. You know, (laughs) I mean, if it kind of like feels good, I think we all have it in in our voice in a certain way. I mean, of course, you know, if it sounds like it's not safe, don't do it. But in general, I'm like a firm believer, just do it, you know, just just do it. Um, go for it because um, you never know what will happen. Same like with sharing what you want to be. Like if, for instance, I want to be a TEDx speaker. Yes, I'm already telling course. you that right now. Oh, I'd like. I, I want to be. That I want to share my story on a big stage, like big stage. I want to be that. So I have no problem in telling you that right now, and I am a firm believer that because I keep on repeating, this is going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I have to let go of like the, well, what are they going to think? And are they going to like, um, well, 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 you know, does she have this? Does she have that? Don't, don't do it. I think that you just have to let go of what other people will think about you, will say about you, and you just have to share it. And quite honestly, I did that, mm, I would say maybe eight, 10 years ago. Yeah. I went through some people on social media where I felt like they were, you know, whatever, like either way leaving negative comments yeah. or maybe the comments yeah. weren't aligning with mine and yeah. I had no problem deleting them because I thought if you are appearing on my feet and it's kind of like, whoa, what is that? I don't want that, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so I just had to let go. I was like, you know what? I don't think this is a good, this is not a good match. Um, so I just had to let go of it and, um, that just happens for a reason. So I rather look at a friendship as something that's high quality, but it's on the same energy and vibe level than having a lot of people. And uh, some of those um, are just not really enriching my life, right? Our lives are too short. You may as well just, you know, go for high quality and and maybe fewer ones that really matter. Absolutely. It's quality, not quantity. And we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. So let's not have a crappy life. Let's have a happy life. (laughs) You know, it really is that simple. And I totally align with what you're saying. And um, it's so empowering, particularly now, just to to say, shake it off, let go of the stuff that's not serving us, that's draining our energy, the people around us that are just putting us down or got this, everyone's got judgment, right? Let go of that, particularly about ourselves, which, you know, you and I, but (laughs) just just stepping up. So um, with all of your words of wisdom, what would be three top tips you could impart to people? We were talking about the goal setting and stuff, but overall in life, what would be three top tips? I kind of like have like three C's in my life. That would be uh, my tips right there. It's yeah. connection, collaboration, and community. Where you're thinking like, oh, is that like random? Because in first name, C- Christiana starts with a C. Um, so building connections means you might reach out to people or things that you previously did not know about. I mentioned the papaya. I mentioned the celery juice. And maybe your first thoughts are like, ooh, and why? But then I say, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I'm challenging you right now. I frequently buy things for my children that they have never tried before. 
um, whether that's food or I take them on experiences they had never taken before because I want to put them in a situation to where they are getting comfortable with being uncomfortable yeah. okay so I would like that they try things that they're not familiar with because we're all going to travel the world and guess what there's not going to be always um, a Starbucks and a whatever place <laughs> at the corner yeah. that we know for me I like oh my yeah. gosh it's like foods I don't know so we want to become comfortable with foods with experiences with people because at the end of the day it's all not all that different all innovations all have been there in some variation and shape and form and that's what I would like that they realize mm. so that's my first thing build connection and make yourself um, uncomfortable with you know those situations and yeah. then kind of look back and see what did we learn um, the second thing was really looking at the collaboration I would like that you think of like hmm, your challenge should be think about your friends or your family and challenge yourself what do you have in common with some of them yeah. and the the cool thing is that we frequently tend to focus on our differences yeah. where actually you have much more in common with people than what you might think so your challenge should be there's this amazing thing that's called as uh, the six degrees of kevin bacon right so that shows that in the Hollywood film industry, some yeah. people have worked with Kevin Bacon, who's a very famous actor. And in he has produced so many films that by now, if you step, you know, six degrees away from Kevin Bacon, you probably run into somebody that has worked with him. So I always challenge my students, figure out what you have in common with somebody else. And I give them five minutes to figure it out. And you would be surprised what they figure out. So instead of figuring out how different you are, yeah. actually figure out what you have in common. Because commonalities build friendship. And the last thing that leads exactly to that, the community. Build community, um, you know, rather than, you know, thinking of your own little island, what can you do to maybe pull people into you and share your story with them? And that will really resonate. Love it. I love it. I love it. And we were talking about all, all these three things all the way through connections, collaborations and community because it is m most important now in, in the world to, to hang around these like-minded people and to overcome all the, the negative stuff like, you know, as you were saying, looking at the individual differences but finding the commonalities and drawing together. And that's like what I was saying about before workshopping life with like-minded people you know working out and and finding your tribe I think this is definitely time to find your tribe and your tribe your tribe supports you when you're having good days and bad so when you're down and out they're there to pick you up and then you know to also champion you when you know you're on this mission or you're on your journey and good things are happening and like go you they give you a pat on the back and it just inspires I would like we're so on the same page it's not funny so um you know at the end of the day uh, you know we've, we've talked about your passion but what sort of legacy would you like to leave I would like to leave the legacy that we frequently tend to overthink things but it's actually just keeping it simple yeah. you know that like we wellness or health is really not complicated most people know what to do to lead a healthy life yep they know that they need to move they know what to eat to be healthy and so my legacy is it's frequently it's it's quite simple you know as i as i said just do it really look at the basics get started with small steps Get started with very simple fruits and vegetables. You don't have to spend money on expensive powders or shakes or anything. Bananas, apples, that's really, or carrots, you know, all those are really inexpensive fruits and vegetables. Just go outside and walk, doesn't cost anything. So my motivation is always that I can help you get healthy. I can help you get happy. I can help you get more productive. Yeah. You know, sticky notes. And I have systems that I have built that I share my accountability group. They are very basic. They're very simple, but they're very effective. So my legacy is really instead of like making it like super complicated and feeling, you know, people need to purchase this and that. Yeah. Um, really just go down, you know, to the basics. And that was really what's going to help because I tried all the other ways and it really actually didn't help me so I came down and I've developed 
as I say, a simple structure that is working. I love it. And I, I it will send you broke trying to do all the right things and follow the right regimes and whatever, but keep it simple and look in your own backyard, open your pantry, see what's in there and take it from there. I just love how you simplify everything because this is the way this year too is keep it simple, let go of all the, the big stuff or I should be doing this. Look at your language, you know, and just keep it simple. Just take the pressure off yourself and just start doing. You and I are so aligned in that sense of just actioning stuff. You know, let's not just talk about it. Let's put it into action, energy in motion, right? So, you know, it's the way forward and keep it simple, like, because that stops us from starting procrastinating. Oh, I need this new outfit or I need this in place or I need to get this juicer before I can do it. Well, no, you don't. Like, look for solutions because they're all around us. And that's why you and I are here just to help guide people, right, to find these simple solutions, to get them going, get them active. Because as you said, people know what they need to do, but it's getting started and it's the kickstart. So, you know, it's the kickstart program that we're sort of all behind is like, okay, let's hold your hand and we'll get going. And as we said before, accountability is super, super, super important because that's going to keep you going, keep you on that that, uh, transformational journey. Yeah, and, and um, I also think that frequently people say, oh, I don't know where to start or this or that. Well, that's what I mentioned earlier. You and I said the connection and the collaboration and the community, um, you know, there, there are coaches there that can help you with, with that stuff Yeah. Um, to get you started and to hold your hand, as you mentioned. So, yeah, our jobs are really, we're just here to make you happier and healthier and stronger. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. It's it's such a joy and pleasure to talk to someone who's on the same page and is passionate about it because your passion just comes through. Like you, you can hear it in your voice. You can see it in your face. Like, you know, it, it just brings you joy. And joy, of course, is the journey of yours. So that's part of your journey is to bring joy to others. You can just see it and feel it. And, you know, you are being the beacon of love and light that's just resonating out. You've got this really strong, fantastic radio station that I want to tune into. Like it's, a, it's a, you're playing some great songs, babe. <laughs> love it. <laughs> so before we wind up, you've got your um your podcast, um, Hello Happiness. Now, what platform is Uh, Oh, sorry, Happy Healthy Hustle podcast. Do we find that on Spotify? Where where do we find that? Or YouTube? You can find that on all places. And actually, I would love for you to check it on your YouTube. And of course, hit that subscribe button right there. Because I went back and um, especially the most recent episodes now, I'm filming them to share not only the amazing audio, but also, of course, the visual pieces with the audience. So you can watch my podcast episodes on visual, but there's also an audio YouTube episode. So if you don't want to watch it, you can also just listen to it. So it's on both ways on YouTube. And then all the other podcast channels that you usually use, whether that's your Spotify, your Apple your Amazon, wherever you are, you can tune in to those. And if you want to see all of them, of course, you can go to my website. It's happy, uh, sorry, it's hello happy nest. Yeah. Hello happy nest as like the nest in one word. And I have a podcast tab right there. You can also look at my blog. There are recipes. You can download some of those healthy recipes that I talked about. And you can check out my mastermind group, which is active and swinging. We are holding each other accountable to reach whatever goals you set for yourself and making your 2024 the best year ever. Fantastic. So active and swinging, what, did you say that's Instagram or was that, where, where was it? Say? Oh, no, active and swinging is more my word for the year. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry, 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 sorry. So happy, so hello, happiness, is that .com? Yep, that's it. Yeah, .com, yeah, perfect. And your Insta is at hello, happy nest. Hello dot happy dot happy dot nest. That's right. Uh-huh. Perfect. I post a video every day. No matter whether that's weekday, weekend, I post a video every day. And it's actually quite fun because I do shots from California. I show um my university campus, recipes, my family. So you do the whole thing and you yep. realize, wow, this lady, she is really <laughs> um, trying to make me feel better because she actually leads a normal life. Oh my god you know she's not some influencer um yeah I do um 
I do do that. And I think what's important is, um, you know, building the community there, but then also looking into, um, you know, just figuring out how can I help you? So I'm a coach at the end of the day, and I would love to connect with you and help you to get to wherever you would like to be. Oh, I love it. You know, your energy is real, you're energetic, you're positive, you're happy. Who doesn't want that, right? So you're just putting out that energy. And if you're drawn to it, guys, just reach out to Christiana on all these things. I will post the links also uh, underneath all of this. But Christiana, thank you so much for being a guest on um, Magic Mike Moments. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to someone who's on the same page. Like, oh, you know, 2024 is about keeping it simple, but it's about doing stuff, just getting started with simple, small steps. You know, be comfortable, get comfortable with being uncomfortable, you know, because we're perfectly imperfect. And, you know, we're all here to support each other. As you said, it's collaboration, it's community, it's connections. And this is what this this whole year is about, like just moving forward with the joy and finding the fun and the happiness and stepping out of the dark and into the light because life's too short. We just want to create a happy one, don't we? So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a guest. And I look forward to uh, following you more on the socials as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I would love for everybody to connect and uh, stay tuned for my upcoming YouTube videos. I have like a cool gem that I'm working on right now. So if you subscribe to my channel, you're going to see some really cool things. Yeah, well, encourage everyone to reach out and subscribe because there's gold in it and we need to be more connected and listening to these words of wisdom. It's the only way forward. Well, once again, thank you for joining us, Christiana, and look forward to uh, following your progress down the track. See you later. Thank you.